Well, I guess I'm even wondering, you know, how much driving there is to be done in an autonomous vehicle, right? So why don't you tell me, I mean, what, 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 what's it like to be an autonomous vehicle test specialist at Argo? I mean, what's the job like? What do the duties entail? Are you sitting there, you know, you know, in a, in a seat, just waiting for something to go wrong? Are you driving? Are you actually driving some? I mean, what, what's the actual job like? Uh, so, you know, it is surprisingly, it's, it's a lot more interesting and complex than people think. You know, mm. I, there's an, a narrative out there because of events that it took place in the past at other companies that there's a guy, somebody sitting there looking yeah. at their phone and mm-hmm. then that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then something bad happens, they get blamed. So that's, that's the opposite of how mm. it, it works, certainly at Argo. And, I, and I'm aware that other companies take it very seriously too. So first of all, there's, there's two people in the car. Mm-hmm. There's two people. And uh, that will continue to, until it's no longer necessary, which is a hmm. different conversation. Um, so there's the, always going to be two people in the car, basically. Until it's no longer necessary. Yeah. And okay. you know, eventually you'll go down to one, eventually go down to none. Yeah. But, so well, I mean, I think that's the- smart. I mean, I think that's, you know, <laughs> like with the Uber incident that happened, you know, if there's one driver, you know, sitting there, it's pretty easy to, you know, I think zone out, lose focus, zone out. Right. And so if you have someone else holding you accountable, I think that right there to me is like a, a good safety check. So uh, first, yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the first thing, I guess, way to think about it is when you um, have two people in the car, uh, they can observe each other and the outside uh, world. And so mm-hmm. they're both aware of the situation awareness. They have both the situation awareness as to what's happening. That's, that's really critical. Also, yep. um, if they develop a rapport, a professional mm-hmm. rapport, that can, that's not, it, their skills don't, aren't just summed, they're almost multiplied. Mm-hmm. Because you, when you have that level of uh, synchronicity with another person, I mean, we did a recent story uh, about musicians who work at Argo in mm-hmm. test specialist operations. And we discovered that there are many different, seemingly not obvious external outside world skills are very applicable. And among them are people who are, play music together. Mm-hmm. Uh, very in tune because you're in the car. So you, the person on the left seat, their hands are hovering by the steering wheel. They are looking you know, in the mirrors and forward. Mm-hmm. Um, Kind of like a scuba diver would is always you know check depth check pressure scan your okay. surroundings make sure you know what's going on and so they are anticipating um what people outside might do they're also anticipating what the vehicle might do because in autonomous mm-hmm. mode the vehicle has a set of behaviors they're anticipating that they it will be optimal and so they have to make it, decisions you know all the time uh, is this going correctly or mm-hmm. is is this optimal or suboptimal if it's not optimal, they take over preemptively to make sure nothing happens that mm-hmm. you know, is not good. I mean, whatever that, it, may, it might be insignificant and generally it is, uh, but you wanna know and you wanna sure. be safe. So that's the left seat person. They're also doing something called commentary driving. Uh, have you ever watched videos of uh, rally drivers from, like Finland, like you know, no. desert racing, come on. You've never seen like these, these rally cars flying over hills in like the videos on YouTube. Or Baja I I, 1000, I th- Mexico, Baja 1000. Yeah, right? yeah, okay, I've seen, I've seen them. So I did, I did the Baja once as a navigator. And in mm. those videos, you have a two-man team, a two-woman team. And the right seat person, oh, sorry, the right seat person is giving instructions like, you mm-hmm. know, left 250, right turn 300. Yeah. And they're at this constant dialogue um, between the two people. And in an autonomous vehicle, you have a variation of that. In a test vehicle, the left seat person is uh, speaking out loud and commenting on what they observe that's relevant to mm. what's happening. For example, you know, I might, we might be cruising along and then I, w- uh, I if I was in the left seat, would say, you know, I see a pedestrian stepping off left to right at next intersection. So that indicates to the right seat person, that the left seat person sees it. Mm-hmm. And that if for any reason, the autonomous vehicle does not react properly, the left Mm -hmm. seat person is ready to preempt anything. Got it. And the right seat person is listening all the time to make sure that that commentary driving is accurate. Mm -hmm. And if for any reason is not accurate, the right seat person might say, uh, dog, next corner, right side, right to left. Oh, sorry, Mm -hmm. you know, right to left. 
and then that would get them back in this kind of like sync zone. It's like a Zen state Got it. where they're both observing what's happening. Now the right. So they don't have a steering wheel uh, ready to take over like uh, well, the the training drivers when you're right. 14. No, the right seat. <laughs> there's no steering wheel on the right seat. But the right seat person um, is uh, they have a laptop. They're also looking out the window uh, and observing the surroundings. And the right seat person can also see the sensor inputs uh, mm -hmm. that the autonomous vehicle sees from its sensors. You, know, you have a lidar, you have a radar, um, you have a camera, and uh, they can see also a, a view of uh, prediction lines. So yeah. on this display, you have all the actors in the area, or hopefully all, and then they can see prediction lines suggesting where where uh, people may go, or cars may go. Mm -hmm. And so this relationship between the left seat and right seat uh, is very, is critical, that it's a healthy and happy relationship. Yeah. And so this is a lot more than going to driving school. Yeah, And when it's done right, it's like seeing a band play mm -hmm. your favorite song awesomely. Yeah. Awesomely. And uh, that's, a, that's a general summary of a day in the life of, of a, or an hour in the life of a test specialist. And let me tell yeah. you, being in it, it's like, imagine being in like the space shuttle, mm -hmm. um, you know, among a group of just regular airplanes, because you, it's, you feel you're, you're, it's like being in a movie. Yeah. So there, there's definitely a lot going on, but you know what? It actually, it's funny. It reminds me of sort of, I mean, I've actually interviewed someone on my podcast before, a couple that used to drive for Uber and Lyft together, which mm -hmm. is totally against the rules, but they made it three or four or 500 trips before they got <laughs> reported one too many times. And actually a lot of what you were mentioning, they kind of echoed and we've, you know, detailed other drivers, especially in the food delivery space where you are kind of allowed to do that. I mean, it's a lot easier to do it as, you know, sometimes do these things as a team, you know, A, for companionship, B, for you know ease of navigation right c for someone to run into the store you sit there and double park right but there are some interesting uh you know i, th I think people do enjoy that team dynamic i guess you would say right like it may it tends to make things easier it tends to you know like when you find a good partner you can definitely do these things uh, pretty well it is